Hello there, uh, I'm Rob from Huey Games and I'm going to share my screen now for the presentation that I'm going to give today. So hopefully you guys can all can all see that now. So yeah, my name's Rob, uh, CEO and Creative Director of Huey Games. Uh, we develop games for consoles, both on a work for hire and uh, original IP capacity. And we port games to all consoles across current and next gen. Um, this talk, as the title suggests, is uh, is about porting. Uh, it's, it's about tips for porting your Unity games to consoles. So, just a quick bit of background about myself before I begin. I've been in the games industry for about uh, fifteen years. Um, as uh, mostly as a game director and lead designer. And you can see uh, a bunch of the games that I've had the pleasure and the privilege to work on uh, on this slide. And here are some of the things that we've been working on at Huey Games since we set up in 2016, all of which required porting across uh, consoles. And we've currently got other unannounced projects in progress as well, including for PS5 and uh, Xbox Series X. So this is what I'm going to cover in the talk today, seven categories, uh, which Unity version uh, you should use when you're porting to consoles, uh, what does Unity not do out of the box for your game, how your game's features impact uh, porting, how the unique features of each platform uh, affects your porting plans, optimization and asset bundles, um, being prepared to, uh, to, to, to tweak uh, shaders, and the technical requirements, being familiar with the technical requirements of each platform. That, those are sort of the high level areas that we're gonna dive into. So you're developing a game in Unity and ultimately you want to bring that game to consoles. Now, whether you plan on working with uh, a porting house such as Huey Games or porting the game yourself, there are a number of things um, that you need to consider right from the beginning of, uh, of the project. Firstly, which version of Unity are you going to use? Uh, you need to decide um, which version uh, and ensure that that version is supported across all the console platforms that you want to hit. Um, it, can take, it can take a while for different platform holders to support the very latest versions of any game engine, and uh, some might take longer than others to add support for their console. So uh, unless you have a really specific reason not to, it's always advisable to pick a version uh, of the engine, a version of Unity, which is already supported by all of your target platforms. That might sound really obvious, um, but it's worth being certain to avoid problems later down the line. Don't, for example, make the mistake of um, you know, using a cutting edge version of, of Unity, which may be a couple of the consoles already support, but one or two of them don't yet support, and assuming that the support will come online in time before you finish the project, because it might well not do, and then you have to do a lot of work to go down to a different version. So just be careful with that selection up front. Think about what's not supported out of the box. So back in the day, um, developers either used either used to build their own engines from, from scratch. That's what we uh, used to do at other studios years ago. Um, or had to pay extremely expensive license fees for, for using somebody else's engine. But today, engines like Unity offer uh, affordability and superb integration across all of the major platforms. However, 
Um, that doesn't mean that you simply press a button to compile to a new platform and everything's magically going to work. You need to pay attention to what is not supported out of the box in Unity. And in the case of porting to consoles, this includes, for example, uh, controller support, uh, you know, controller system integration, uh, and your save and load system. So when it comes to controller support, there are some great plugins uh, for Unity, such as InControl and Rewired, which can kind of plug this gap for you. Um, so at Huey Games, we do recommend using one of one of those rather than writing your own solution from scratch con because controller configurations and requirements can be surprisingly complex and varied across the uh, across the console platforms so why give yourself the headache of all that extra work when there are plugins available which have already done it yes there can be some configuration uh, issues and the odd bug um, but that kind of pales in comparison to the workload of building it, of building it all from scratch. Uh, your save and load system, on the other hand, will probably need to be more bespoke depending on the exact needs of your particular game. The best advice uh, in this case is to look at the requirements for each console platform uh, and how the save, save load systems work on those pl platforms because they're different and make sure you're designing with those in mind rather than just building a save and load system which will work on PC and assuming it will work across all the consoles because it probably won't. Uh, if you don't have access to all the information you need, obviously you can talk to, to other developers, people like ourselves and, and uh, get that information together. Now, if you plan to do to port a lot of games, you know, all of your own games or a series of games or, or whatever, then building an abstraction layer for these not supported out of the box elements could save you a lot of time in, in the long run. Um, as a porting house, we obviously do a lot of porting at Huey Games. So we've invested in, in building our own internal code library called Huey Core uh, to handle the abstraction of features that are common to all platforms, such as save load systems and user management. Um, so to give an example for save load, uh, each platform has a unique mechanism for handling player saves. So for Xbox, you have connected storage for PS4, you have a file-based system or player prefs. Uh, and Switch has a, a mounted save area. Uh, each Unity game uh, that you port from, say, PC, let's assume we're porting from a PC game, is either going to uh, be using player prefs or file IO to store game saves and other persistent data. So what, what we've done, for example, with Huey Core is that Huey Core will override the file IO and player prefs coming from the game uh, namespaces um, to get drop-in support for saving and loading on each platform. Um, whether the game uses player prefs or file writes. So calls to player prefs will then be redirected to the appropriate save mechanism for the current platform. So on Xbox One, for example, this means serializing player prefs like a dictionary or a map to connected storage via that abstraction layer. So that's just one example of how we've used abstraction in Huey Core to make the porting of multiple different games more efficient. So, and if you're planning to port multiple games yourself, then building up a code library to handle abstraction uh, could be a good investment for your porting team. Now, controller support and save and load systems 
are examples of features which pretty much every console game is going to need to support. But of course, you also need to think about the additional features that your game has where there may not be a catch-all solution built into Unity for sorting those features, uh, for, for supporting those features ubiquitously across all the consoles. Key examples uh, include online multiplayer, um, leaderboards, uh, achievements, trophies. Um, so yeah, network features. Uh, network features like online multiplayer and leaderboards have to be integrated with the particular networking solutions and requirements of each platform. And those can vary quite significantly. Uh, there may be some plugins and middleware solutions to help with these. You know, we've got Photon, we use Photon for quite a lot of our projects, for example. But either way, you can expect to spend a lot of uh, porting time um, uh, setting up these up for each platform. And in some cases, you might find that including sophisticated networking features in your game could perhaps double the amount of time you need to spend on porting to set this up with all, all the different uh, features, depending on uh, what, what you're doing. So just keep that in mind and plan your solution uh, carefully. Achievements and trophies are, of course, a requirement for PlayStation and Xbox platforms, uh, although they're, they're, they're done differently, but they're not required for Steam um, or Nintendo Switch. They're optional on Steam and not required for Switch. And the rules and requirements for uh, these two platforms uh, are, are a little bit different from each other. So make sure you design your achievement system in a way that, uh, that, that both the PlayStation system and the Xbox system are satisfied to, to avoid any, any surprises later on. Now, again, if you're likely to be porting a lot of games, it's worth considering which game features uh, you might want to invest in building abstraction layers for. Now, obviously, if none or if very few of the games you are planning to port have online multiplayer or leaderboards, uh, then you might not think it's worth taking the time to develop abstraction layers for those networking features. On the other hand, if every game you're planning to port is going to have online multiplayer, then, then it's worth considering. Um, achievements and trophies are a little bit different because, as I said, they're required platform features for PlayStation and Xbox. So if you are porting to those platforms regularly, then it's a good idea to abstract those, uh, you know, that system. On the other hand, if you're only going to be porting to Nintendo Switch, get the Nintendo Switch games, then maybe you don't need to worry about that. Now, obviously, for, for us uh, as, a, as a porting company, we need needed to invest in all of these things uh, for Huey Core. Um, we work with lots of different games for different clients, and. For example, in the case of uh, achievements and trophies, um, we have what we call our award manager within Huey Core, which is set up as a placeholder feature within the library, which can then be enabled for the platforms which, which require that functionality. If you're, if you're targeting consoles, uh, it's also worth thinking about the specific features and the makeup on the particular consoles that you're targeting well in advance. Uh, in particular, think about the implications of the differences found on Nintendo Switch compared to the other console platforms. Uh, unlike other console platforms or indeed the, the PC, Switch games need to work on uh, both the big screen and on the small screen. Uh, this could be an important consideration when it comes to your UI design, for example, to make sure everything's readable, uh, however your game is being, deployed. So, uh, being played. So think about that early on to avoid reworking things later. And think about where you're porting from. You know, 
Are you porting up from, you know, up from mobile or are you porting across from PC? What are the implications in terms of performance, controls, play style? Um, if the game was originally a mobile game, how does it, and you're bringing it to Switch, how does it look it, when Switch is docked, blown up on a big 4K TV? Because you've only ever seen it on a small screen. Um, if it's originally a PC game, and perhaps it had you know, uh, very high definition, big monitors to work with, then maybe the HUD, uh, the text on the on your HUD or your UI was very small because of the, those big monitors with high resolutions. And if you're bringing that to Switch, how does it look on a 720p handheld screen? Is the text still legible, readable? And of course, on Switch, there's the different uh, control options. You've got docked, you've got handheld, you've got touchscreen, you've got single Joy-Con, you've got Pro Controller, and so on. So how uh, is your control system going to work across that? You need to plan ahead for all of these things in your, in your project plan. To give an example from our own porting experience, when we did the, uh, the, the port of the Mystery of Woolly Mountain for Nintendo Switch, which is a point and click adventure that was coming from, from PC, we knew we had to support the touchscreen as a control method. It was, as, you know, it was probably going to be the preferred control method for most people. And we had to add controller support. Um, neither of these existed in the original PC game, which was built for mouse control. So we were not just rewiring an, in, an existing control scheme. We were effectively building two new control schemes. Uh, and we had to account for that in the, in the project plan. So uh, if you are bringing your game to console from PC, it's, it's important to think about optimization from the outset. Profile early, profile often, use the Unity profiler, and ideally use the profiling tools provided by the console platforms as well. That way you can chart your course to your optimization targets in a managed way. Uh, if you don't do this, you may find yourself suddenly hitting a cliff edge when you try to get your game up and running on consoles for the first time. Um, don't make the mistake of assuming that uh, your game's targeting a low spec on PC uh, and uh, you don't think optimization is going to be a concern for the consoles, you could be caught out. So just keep that in mind. Now on Nintendo Switch, which can be played in handheld mode, remember that you are optimizing not just for performance, which is the obvious thing, but also for battery life. Um, you will almost certainly want to use Unity Asset Bundles for this reason because they are critical for optimizing disk access, which has a significant impact on battery life. Uh, asset bundles also have the advantage of potentially reducing the package size of your game. Um, you know, if it's a digital game, that's important. And will help you adhere to patch size requirements, which the, the consoles might have. Uh, as such, it's well worth building your game with Unity Asset Bundles from the outset if you're planning on console ports in particular, and especially if Switch is a, plat uh, a target platform. You don't want to get to the end of the porting pro process and realize, oh, we've got to rewrite everything to use Asset Bundles now. And, you know, sometimes, depending on what you're doing with your game, to be, being prepared to tweak shade is important. You know, Unity does an amazing job of allowing to get your game up and running quickly on the console platforms. But sometimes there can be shader issues on one or more of those platforms. Um, and so that's another reason for getting your game 
running on the target platforms as soon as possible and being prepared to tweak shaders where necessary and having someone with that expertise um, to fix any platform specific bugs. And of course, this is especially true if you are using any bespoke shaders in your game, you're more likely to have, have issues uh, in that case. And, you know, last but, but, but not least, uh, read the technical requirements for each platform ahead of time. Um, each platform has a unique set of requirements for passing submission. And the, uh, the sooner you absorb the implications of those, the sooner you can plan your development roadmap accordingly. If you're not uh, if you're not familiar with the requirements of each console uh, ahead of time in detail, then don't be surprised to find yourself adding or rewriting significant portions of code to to adhere to them uh, later on. Again, to give uh, another example from our own experience, when we ported uh, Hyper Sentinel back in 2018, uh, it was important for all the platforms uh, to hit 60 frames a second um, for the gameplay. And while we didn't have any major problems achieving this in normal conditions um, on any of the platforms, uh, we weren't hitting 60 frames a second in the power saving mode for low battery levels on Nintendo Switch at first. Uh, so we had to do further optimization specifically for that low battery level power saving mode on Switch. We were fine in normal conditions on Switch with 60 frames, but not in the power saving mode. And this was our first Nintendo Switch port at the time. But fortunately, we had done our homework in advance. Firstly, by, as I said, reading through all of the technical requirements. So we were aware uh, in advance of the power saving performance requirements. And secondly, by profiling the game early and often, not just with the Unity profiling tools, but with Nintendo's own profiling tools, which obviously flag up these kinds of issues. So we could account for this in our project plan and everything uh, you know, went smoothly because we had the time set aside to deal with this uh, with this issue. So hopefully that has been helpful for Unity develop developers looking at porting games to consoles. Um, whether you're doing that yourself or looking to work with a porting house and, and just want to understand uh, some of the issues a bit better. Um, my contact details are at the bottom of the, of the slide there. And uh, let's see if we can uh, see if there are any questions. Uh, I'll just click into the Q&A panel here. OK, so um, first question here. Is it easier to port games from PC to console or from console to PC? Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I mean, we uh, always tend to go from PC to console. So I'm not sure we've done any projects where we've actually gone from console to PC. Um, uh, I would say in general, um, it's probably a bit easier going console to PC because uh, than, than PC to console because, um, it, well, it, and it depends which consoles you're targeting. So as I've kind of said in the talk, each console has different requirements and each console has different systems, for example, for things like save and load. So going from PC to console, you have to cover each of those systems. Um, so you have to put the work in there, hence why we've put that uh, um, abstraction layer uh, in, in for ourselves. Whereas I would, I would think going from console to PC, um, you know, the, the, system that you, the systems that you set up on console are more likely to, to kind of work on PC. Um, but as and and optimization 
is more of a kind of uh, open window on PC. But as I say, we've we've mostly gone from PC to consoles, so that's that's been our experience. So hopefully that's uh, that's answered that one. Um, next question: In your experience, what was the what was the most difficult platform to make a port to, and why? Well, I mean that does that does um, it depends on the features of your game to an extent. Um, the the Nintendo Switch obviously has some different characteristics in terms of performance next to um, PlayStation and Xbox, which are very similar in performance. Um, so there's, there's those optimization issues. And of course, there is, as I said, there's things like the, um, the power saving uh, issues, the optimization for battery life on Switch the control systems on switch so there can be some 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 particular difficulties on switch with with that on the other hand um on and, and networking as well you know they have different networking solutions on these different platforms and perhaps maybe the xbox with xbox live is is a more mature is you know is is it is an easier networking solution than you might find on switch if you've got networking um on the other hand, um, the Xbox has some differences in terms of user handling, um, in terms of controller, you know, controllers connecting and disconnecting, and there's extra work that you have to put in on on the on that platform for those things. So it it, it, it depends on the features of your game um, and how those align with the the platform. How much optimization you're going to have to do? Do you have networking? Um, for for a simple game, perhaps Xbox and Switch are going to give you more to think about um, in your planning. So so hopefully that's uh, hopefully that's uh, giving you a bit of an idea uh, about that. So of course, PlayStation platforms have their own um, requirements and, and issues that you have to adhere to uh, as well. But yeah, you, you usually have a little bit more to think about. Um, with Xbox and uh, with Switch, I would say. Okay, so I don't think there are any more questions at the moment, and uh, we're pretty much at the end end of the session time. So thank you very much, everybody. As I said, please uh, feel free to get in touch if you have uh, any further questions. Thanks. Bye bye. <laughs>